Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this lesson, we're going to keep working on our tic-tac-toe game. And this video is going to be a continuation of the last video where we were working in our tic-tac-toe button function. Now let's get started. So here we have our tic-tac-toe game open inside of Unity. And the first thing that I'm going to do is hit the play button so that we can run through our game and make sure everything is working. And so that you can also compare what we have here with what you've been creating at home. Now that we're in the play mode, we can see that all nine buttons in our tic-tac-toe grid are interactable. We can also see that it is displaying that it is the X player's turn by this little circle icon here. Now, whenever we click on any of these buttons in our tic-tac-toe grid, we can see that it marks that space with the current player's icon, and then it switches to the O player's turn. And as we click another space we can see that it marks that space with an o and switches back to the x player's turn and so it looks like everything is working properly now there's one thing that i would like to change about the buttons in our tic-tac-toe grid so i'm going to expand our canvas and then our grid game object then i'm going to select all the buttons in our grid and i'm going to go into the button component and find the disabled color and change that to being completely white with the alpha channel up to 255. Now when we play through our game, we can see that whenever we click on any of the buttons on our tic-tac-toe grid, that button becomes marked with a solid X. Before it was kind of like a faded X. Now the button is still disabled so we can't click on it again, but I like this a lot better because the X is a solid X rather than a faded X. Now let's go ahead and open our game controller script in Visual Studios. Once you have your game controller script open in Visual Studios, the task that we're going to be tackling today is making it easier to identify which spaces of our tic-tac-toe grid have been marked by which player. Now currently in our button function, we're handling all the visual aspects of our tic-tac-toe game. We are marking each space with the respected player's icon. Now, although this function handles many of the visual mechanics of our game, there's still not a very good method to use when identifying which space has been marked by which player. And so we're going to need to add a few more lines of code to this function so that when we create an algorithm to check to see whether a player has won the tic-tac-toe game, it's going to be a lot easier to identify which spaces have been marked by which player. And so to do this, we need to scroll up to the top and we're going to add a new variable. This is going to be a public int and it's going to be an array of size nine. And this variable can be called something like marked spaces. Let's add a comment to this variable and we can say IDs which space was marked by which player. Now we need to initialize this array inside our game setup function. And so beneath this for loop, I'm going to add another for loop. And this is going to say int i equals zero semicolon i is less than marked spaces dot length and then semicolon and we do i plus plus. Then we need some curly braces. And inside this for loop, all we have to do is say marked spaces, square brackets, and inside the square brackets, we say i, and then we set that element of the array to negative 1. Now, the reason why we want to initialize each element in this array to negative 1 is because there are going to be nine different elements in this array, and each one of those elements is going to correspond with one of the spaces in our tic-tac-toe grid. Now, when a player clicks on one of the buttons, we're going to change the value of the corresponding element inside this array to the value of whose turn it is. And because zero means that it's the X player's turn, we can't initialize our marked spaces array to zero. Otherwise, it would mean that the X player has already marked all nine spaces. And that's why I'm going back to negative one. Now we want to scroll down to our tic-tac-toe button function and where we left the gap in our code from the last video, we're going to add a few more lines of code. And so the first thing that we're going to do is call our marked spaces variable and we're going to use the which number parameter to identify which element we've clicked on. 
Now we're going to set the int value of this element equal to the whose turn variable. This line of code is super important because this is the method that we're going to use to identify which space has been marked by which player. And so we are using the whose turn value to identify that the current space has been marked by that player. The last thing that we're going to do inside this function is increment the turn counter. So I'm going to type turn counter plus plus semicolon. Now let's go ahead and save this script and then go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, we're going to select our game controller game object and then expand our marked spaces array and set the size value to 9. Then if we want, we can change each element to be negative 1. This is a little redundant because inside our game setup function, we're initializing each element of this array to negative 1. But this might help us out to remember that even when we're not in the play mode, that we know what the marked spaces values are going to be set to. Now when we play our game and we have the game controller selected, within the inspector we're going to be able to see the values of the marked spaces array change to either a 0 or a 1 depending on whose turn it is when we select a button. And so if I select this button, which is element 2 in our array, we can see that it changed from negative 1 to 0. And now when I select this button, which is the element 3, you can see that it changed to a positive 1. And if I select all the buttons, we can see that now there are no negative ones inside our marked spaces array. So everything seems to be working properly. The last thing that I'm going to do is make sure that I save my scene. Now, although there weren't any visual changes to our game today, it's still very important that we do this step because without this step, it's going to be very difficult for our winner algorithm to identify which space has been marked by which player. Now, I hope you were able to follow along and that everything made sense. If you have any questions, make sure that you leave them in the comments below. Also, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get regular updates when we release new videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.